Okay, so this video is all about manually warping elastic audio. So, off we go. This drum track and this tra bass track both have elastic audio turned on. So remember, that's the little plunger icon over here. I think it's actually a warp marker, but we're not going to worry about that right now. It looks like a plunger, so I'm going with plunger. So, I am going to make a linear tempo change real quick. So I've got my dialog box already up. I'm going to make a selection. Let's have it go down to say 140. So a pretty significant two bar slowdown. And you see that my uh, drum track here had no problem adjusting to the length there because when Elastic Audio analyzed the drum track, it was able to change the track into ticks. So it will respond just like MIDI will. But the bass track, it was less confident about, and so it's in samples. And I can select that bass track and try and get it to conform to the tempo. And it actually goes the wrong way. So it might be just that the rhythms that are in the bass part aren't quite getting analyzed the right way. Something's going on, and conform to tempo doesn't work. So we're going to do it manually. And this will be a great way to learn how to do a telescoping warp. So, there are two main views when you're dealing with Elastic Audio. So one is Analysis View. That shows you where Pro Tools thinks all of the event markers live, right? Those are all the auto-generated event markers. And the other is Warp View, which is where if we're actually going to do any manual warping, that's where we're going to do it. And right now, all we're seeing is event markers. And they, let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger, see if it helps. Notice how these lines don't reach the ends of the clip boundary. Those are how event markers always show up. So there are actually three kinds of markers that we deal with. So the event markers don't reach the edges. There are tempo event generated warp markers that have a little diamond at the top. And then there are warp markers. And these are like, they have the little uh, plunger at the bottom, right? These are like push pins they lock the audio right at that point, and then you can stretch it around those pins. So it's like there's a pin in the tape and you can stretch in either direction. So what we need to do for this one is what's called a telescoping warp. And a telescoping warp always goes from one fixed end of a clip and stretches in or shrinks uh, from that side. So depending on which way you wanna go, you may do a couple of different things. Okay, so you can only do a telescoping warp if you don't yet have any warp markers. So the way that you do it is you use the grabber and you grab any of the event markers and just click and drag. So you'll notice when I did that, that I got a little warp marker right at the very edge. So what that did, was fix the left side in place when I did that telescoping warp. So I grabbed, click and hold and drag, and notice it automatically put my fixed point at the left side of the telescope. In this case, this might just work. I can grab any of these and just drag it out like that, and let's see if it lines up. There's our drum part. And we hear the drum part slowing down a lot with a little bit of artifacts at the end. And let's see if the bass part works. I'll just unsolo those. So that evenly distributed that sound. And that didn't quite work the way we might have wanted, right? So what you might need to do is go piecemeal and separate out the clips. So maybe I go, all right, I know there's a downbeat at the beginning and then another downbeat here. So I might need to, if I need to be super accurate about this, get the second one there, and that guy I know is gonna be on the, the beat, right? So I've got that downbeat there, and I've got this downbeat here, and now I'm gonna try and do my telescoping warp, and I'm gonna do it a little, a couple of times instead. So I'm gonna stretch that measure so that it fits that, since my tempo's changing. And that one's pretty good now. That one's better. And then I'm going to grab the next one and also telescope that one. So warp, 
I'm gonna grab the I'm gonna use the grabber and I'm gonna pull this one out. Notice it again puts the the marker at the beginning of the clip, which we can't see very well right now. And just pull this one out too. And that may give us a better And it kind of did it. It's really close, right? There's still little artifacts because I'm dropping the tempo by so much. A telescoping warp is great, for instance, if you need to adjust a sound effect so that it fits a film or something where the audio isn't really musical and or maybe it is musical, but it just needs a slight adjustment so that it stretches to the right amount of time for whatever is going on in the visual part of the media. So it's a really useful thing for that kind of stuff So because you can do these just tiny little stretches. Maybe you need to stretch a single word just a little longer to fit the dialogue because they had to overdub the, you know, the dialogue for the film because they were in a noisy place when they filmed and couldn't keep that audio. So really useful for that kind of stuff. And a telescope goes from one side and will automatically put a warp marker when you click and drag an event marker with the grabber, it will stretch things out. So I've got my grabber. If I click and drag, and remember, no warp markers can be in there or this won't work. Now, if you want the marker to go, maybe you have an end point instead of a beginning point. So if you know that the very end of the clip needs to be in a certain spot, but your clip needs to start a little earlier, you can also do it by option clicking when you do it but it's not gonna work because I've already put that marker there. So first I need to remove the marker so I can hold Option or Alt with the grabber and get rid of a warp marker. So that's gone now, so I don't have any warp markers in here anymore. Now if I hold Option when I do my click and drag, you'll notice there's this tiny little bracket there. That's showing which direction it's gonna stretch. So now it's gonna stretch from the this end. It's gonna put a placeholder warp marker on that edge instead of the front edge. And then let me drag to the left or to the right to fit whatever is at this ending point that's already lined up. So another kind of warp, I know this is a downbeat, right? And maybe some of this is off time in my music and maybe some of this is off time in my music, whatever it is. And it doesn't need to be during a tempo change, of course. It might just be that somebody had a little error right in here and just needs a little bit of speed up or slow down to fix the time just a little bit. But we're gonna do it in both directions to hopefully get this downbeat to fit with this music and this music. So. The way to do that is waveform, warp, and then we need to place a warp marker right in the center here. Now with the grabber, you can double click an event marker and it will turn into a warp marker. I now have a warp marker in the middle. And now if I want to adjust like an accordion right out from the center, I can. All I need to do is again, kind of use my grabber. I can click and drag on any of these event markers now, and they will stretch to fit against this central place where the pin is. So you can see how that's working now, right? And then, oh, by the way, see that change colors? That means we're positive that we can't process to that degree, and you're gonna get seriously weird noises. So it turns that color to warn you that you're trying to compress or expand too much. So that's the accordion warp, you can just grab any of these and pull on them from a central marker. So that works pretty great. And then you can also just click create warp markers and drag stuff, right? So maybe I know. So if I have to, I can actually put each of these onto my grid. So there's my eighth note grid. And, this is... and I want every one of those to end up in the right place. So I can take this first one and stretch it to the first eighth note, which is, let's make these quarter notes actually. Quarter, cool, oh, there's my quarter note. So there's a quarter note there, quarter. Can pull that one, oh, and it's stretching all of them. So double click to make it a warp marker or control click to make it a warp marker. And then you can actually just drag each warp marker into the right place, like that. And then my ending bit 
is now right on time, even though I'm starting to get artifacts because it's slowed down so much. So adding warp markers and then just dragging where you know the notes are works really great. And then finally, you can also do a range warp. And that is, if I have this spot on time, so let's say I'm going to put in Let's put in a spot right here, and I'm gonna make sure that one's on time. So there's a marker that's on time, and in any kind of real context, this is totally likely. And then this one, I'm actually gonna get on time as well. Now, what I can do is move this one in the middle around, and the outer two will not move. All right, and if I'm in slip, it'll work a lot better. There we go and I can stretch on either side of those two pins. That's called a range warp. So pretty cool. Okay, just to recap those. So first of all, I can do a telescope warp. How do I do that? I use the grabber. And as long as there's no warp markers, I can just grab, click and drag. And that will go from the left side being fixed. And if I want the right side, I need to undo that so that that warp marker is gone. Hold down Option and that will make it happen from the left. If I want it to happen from the middle, I go and create a warp marker in the center, and then I can drag any of the warp markers around it and it will expand in both directions. Then if I want a range warp, I need two spots. I'm double clicking with the grabber to create new warp markers. I need two warp markers, and then I can grab any event marker in the middle and drag that guy around and that is called a range warp. And then you can just do things by hand too. So, you know, I want, I'm gonna go back in time again. I know this is on a downbeat and I'm good with that and I have all my appropriate uh, event markers. They're all actual notes, so. So that's going too fast, right? So I can take this one and move it out a little bit up, oh, but my central point, oh, I ended up with a telescope. I'm gonna put, there's my warp marker. Okay, and then I can do these manually one by one if I want to too. So I've got a warp marker here at the center where I know it's good. And I know this note needs to be on the grid. So I can just click and drag that one and it's fine. And then I can double click it to fix it if I want to. And then I can drag this one around until the next spot where there's a beat, which is probably here. And then I can double click that to pin that in place. Then I can grab this one and move it where it needs to go and just work my way across as I need to and double click to fix them in place. And then this one, whoopsie. Okay, so now I have, and now I have a pretty good accurate slowdown there, even with some of those artifacts because it's so drastic. So that's manual warping. Pretty fun and easy, right? All right, on to the next one.